is this, is this on? Hope you find this. Uh, I don't know how long I'm gonna be stuck in this storage room here uh, in this creepy hotel. Uh, 99 bottles of booze. <laughs> Get it, booze. On the wall, 99 bottles of booze. Take one down, pass it around. 98 bottles of booze on the wall. Enough of the brave act. I'm scared. I want out. I, I found an emergency light, so that's that's. You know, you, you you think about, you know, it's been what, fifteen minutes, and in that time, I've really been reflecting on my life's choices. You know, how did I get in here? I really think that Chuck at the station, the scheduling manager, I don't think that he likes me much. Yeah, he, he really doesn't like you very much. So as the crew and I were getting all the boxes out of the storage room and into the van, we got separated. And I remembered there was one last box in the room here. And so I told them I'm gonna go back and get it. And wouldn't you know, somebody slammed the door in my face. So I've got this last box and I think I deserve to open it and I'm bored. So here is the box that I have in my possession and look at it. It looks like a suitcase, right? Got the handle right here. I'm going to take it to the <laughs> ironically spooky hotel <laughs> like I'm sitting in right now. But I've got a suitcase. And uh, as you can see, our gifter has made it look like a suitcase all the way around. So I'm gonna carefully open this up, not to disturb the aesthetic that they've created in this wonderfully themed box on the outside. I haven't even gotten inside, and I know that it's already themed wonderfully. So, I'm going to get this open, and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the suitcase, like so, and I have cut open the flap to not disturb the packaging, and it says, open if you dare. So, as if I needed some more creepy vibes here in this storage room. Let's uh, get on in here. So here is what I'm looking at. There is a letter assuming that that is who sent the package. You've got the Hollywood Tower of Terror logo. Let's switch it over here. More Hollywood Tower of Terror logos. The infamous elevator. And it says, that door is opening once again and this time it's opening for you. Ah, creepy, creepy vibes. So beautifully themed overall on even the flaps. So not knowing who this came from, let's read this official looking letter and see who our gifters are. Hollywood Tower Hotel, Hollywood, California. Reservation confirmation, one guest, room 1313. Check in October the 31st, 1939. 
check out question mark welcome to the hollywood tower hotel we hope your stay is comfortable and that you find accommodations satisfactory if you need any assistance don't hesitate to ring as a thank you for choosing to stay with us we've provided an array of welcome gifts throughout the hotel should you choose to accept the bellhop holds your first note don't worry about a time limit those don't exist here i think i figured that out there's no turning back now signed d todd dewey todd senior owner of the hollywood tower hotel okay so we still don't know who our gifters are. Still a bit of a mystery, if you will. We've got a copy of the Hollywood banner saying disaster at the Hollywood Tower. Five missing. Where are they? I'm going to say six are missing because I, I feel like I'm missing too. <sighs> Featured articles, Master Gracie laid to rest. Explorer missing, Dr. Albert Falls lost on jungle expedition. Pirate treasure discovered, museum director announces plans for a Caribbean exhibit. So this is dated Wednesday, November the 1st, 1939. Of course, volume 13 and number 13. And here's what it says. Among all of these horrible articles where things are just terrible that are happening, it's, I would say this is not 1939. This is, this fits 2020, does it not? But getting back to 1939, the Hollywood Tower Hotel above is known as a popular spot for Hollywood's elite, but it became the site of tragedy last night as lightning struck the building. Child star Sally Shine, her nanny Emmeline Partridge, celebrity couple Caroline Crossan and Gilbert London, and bellhop Dewey Todd Jr. had all boarded a maintenance elevator when the strike occurred, causing the mechanics to malfunction and the elevator to fall. No bodies were discovered amid the wreckage, leaving authorities to question what truly happened. The hotel owner, Dewey Todd Sr., has issued no statement on the events, but the Hollywood Tower Hotel has been closed pending further investigation. It's not making me feel any better being cooped up in this hotel, let me just say. Okay, so if we're looking back to our suitcase, here's what we're looking at. And I will delve on in and hope that the mystery is solved as we go along. Okay, I have thoroughly investigated the suitcase package and I have found six wonderfully themed packages reflecting all of the characters that we read about in the Hollywood banner. And here is the bellhop package. So let us get this envelope open. I want to keep all of these gorgeous photos that you'll see on all of these envelopes to remember this by. It's going to make quite a lovely spooky display. Okay, we've got our first card. If you had to describe the lobby of the Hollywood Tower Hotel, the word you would use is grand. Stepping in out of the thunderstorm outside is like going back in time. From the ragtime screeching out of the phonograph in the corner to the vintage upholstery on the chairs. The cobwebs draping the huge chandelier give you pause. The reviews you read didn't mention that. With your confirmation note in your hand, you approach the front desk, ringing the little bell that sits on it. A stout bellhop with glasses and a handlebar mustache appears from the back room to take your luggage. Good evening, he says, giving you a little bow. His name tag reads Dewey. 
You point out the mistake on the reservation. Why on earth they give you a 1939 check-in was beyond you. He listens closely, though no recognition seems to pass over his face. How odd. When you mention the welcome gifts he would supposedly give you, his eyes light up as thunder cracks outside. Of course, I've got your first one right here. He pulls a small package out from behind the counter and hands it to you. These are all over the building. Take as many as you'd like. Have a look around our library while you wait. I'll just take these bags up to your room for you. He moves awkwardly, stilted, almost like he's about to lose control of his limbs as he puts your bags on a cart and shuffles away with them. You pause a moment to consider the peculiar tone to that meeting, then shrug and go in the direction he indicated, hoping you'll find the library there. Open the package with the bellhop on it, then find the agent and read his note. And we have the bellhop's box. So let's get on in this, shall we? It's got some beautiful gold wrapping paper on it. I have noticed that there is slight differences in the wrappings from our different characters, which once again shows the incredible theming that we have in this box. I just love it. And this is fabulous. Look at this Hollywood Tower Hotel Bell. What else would a bellhop give you? And on the back, you've got the Hollywood Tower Hotel. I absolutely love this. I'm already seeing in my mind a beautiful display to remember this box by. All of the wonderful pictures, the bell, it's all gonna go together beautifully and I'm going to love having it in my office. Thank you so much, I love it. Next, we're going on to the agent. He looks really creepy, does he not? This hotel is designed for the elite. You can tell the minute you step into the library. Luxurious chairs and sofas are scattered in the space. Several busts of the influential authors sit on pedestals in front of ceiling-high bookshelves. A warm fire burns brightly in the fireplace, illuminating the other person in the room. He's a large man with a dull green coat, smoking a cigar and angrily shuffling through a newspaper. Deciding it might be best to avoid him, you glance around to see a package, much like the one you were just given, sitting beside the grumpy man. You approach slowly, wanting to get a closer look without interrupting his brooding, but he looks up. Just take the package, kid. It ain't mine. He takes a puff off of his cigar and looks over. Say, kid, you ever thought of being in the movies? Pete, agent to the stars. He holds out a hand for you to take. You do so politely, not really interested, but not wanting to offend him either. He hands you a business card, then the package. And with that, he shakes open his paper and goes back to reading, and you feel this conversation is over. You exit the library, spotting glass doors leading to what looks like a garden, and decide to look around there. Open the package with the agent on it, then find the director and read his note. Okay, and the agent's box is a long rectangular one. So let's see what's inside this. I have a fairly good idea of who curated this box from the beautiful theming, storytelling. Um, I think that if you guys saw the Boo Ball last year, you would have a very good guess too. So I'm anxious to do the revealing of who did a wonderful job on this box, but we'll get there soon enough. Okay, lots of bubble wrap. Ah, another wonderful item for what is going to be a beautiful display. 
Hollywood Tower Hotel. You can check in, but you can't check out. Look at that. Ah, this is gonna be the most glorious display. I'm gonna show it to you when we get all done here. And when I get out of this office, considering I will. I love that. Thank you, thank you so much. You're giving me a wonderful display that I'm gonna love. As instructed, we're gonna move on to the director, which is of course Donald. He's looking very miffed. So let's see what Donald's package, the director's, has to say. The indoor garden is quiet, a lovely covered atrium cast and a strange gray light in the storm still raging outside. Wrought iron tables and chairs are set up every few feet, and you'd consider having breakfast here in the morning if every plant in the place weren't dying. Everywhere you look, the plants look unhealthy and brown with shriveled leaves and drooping branches. There's an odd whirring sound that seems to be coming from behind a large bush. And as you round the corner, you find yourself staring into the lens of an old fashioned film camera. Now look at what you've done. You jump at the voice as a short red faced man storms towards you from behind the boilers. First my actors don't show up and now here you are ruining the shot. You apologize, backing up and out of sight of the camera. The director starts rambling about schedules and lighting cues. Spotting your next gift on one of the tables, you hurry back into the lobby. This hotel seems like a weird place to shoot a movie, but you've never understood Hollywood anyway. Open the package with the director on it, then find the starlet and read her note. So we're gonna go on and open the director's package. And it's wrapped in this wonderful white uh, floral print paper, which I adore. And let's see what the director has for us. This is absolutely marvelous. I adore this. This is a diorama. It's 14 pieces. As you can see, it's quite whimsical too with Goofy, Mickey, and Donald. And there's even Maleficent and a TIE fighter, of course, for Disney Hollywood Studios. And there's the tower right there. And the poor guys are in the elevator, of course, about to take a plunge, which, fun fact, I've never done. I would love to see the ghosts, uh, but I just can't handle the drop. So this is gonna be the closest that I will get to it, and I love this. Thank you guys so, so much. I just love how this display is coming together. Okay, as the card instructed, we are going on to the starlet. And of course, it's gorgeous Minnie, and her hair is styling. Although, I don't know how she sees to walk, but it looks great. The elevators make you uneasy, but you couldn't say why. A chill runs up your spine as you step into one. The small directory beside the buttons indicates something called the Tip Top Club, and suddenly you realize you're thirsty. Couldn't hurt to stop in, could it? One somewhat anxious elevator ride later, a chime dings, and you step out onto the 13th floor of the hotel. To your left, a long hall of doors stretches to a dizzying length, the patterned carpet making you squint. To your right, the club's entrance. Stepping inside, you hear a ragtime tune start to play, one that makes you feel like dancing until you notice the young woman seated at one of the tables. Her blonde hair falls in loose curls around her shoulders, and you can't shake the feeling that you've seen her before in an old movie, maybe. She hums along to the music and sips her drink as she notices you. Oh, she flashes you a million dollar smile, digs through her handbag and pulls out a pencil. What would you like me to sign? When you just stare at her for a moment, she frowns. 
Don't you know who I am? I was in the biggest movie of last year. You shrug. She sighs and downs the rest of her drink, then stands, tossing her hair over her shoulder. Well, I suppose I should get back to work. The director will have a fit if I'm late again. She hands you a wrapped parcel similar to the ones you've already found. Here you go, sugar. Don't say I never gave you nothing. She sweeps out of the club, graceful and refined, and after a few moments, you follow. Open the package with the starlet on it, then find the child star and read her note. And of course, the starlet's box would be wrapped in gold paper, so, because she is a shining starlet after all. And we have got some of these gorgeous Halloween hand towels for the kitchen. Something is brewing in this castle and I love the graphic that they use this year. And I had meant to get some for myself and didn't have the time. So I am so appreciative to have these and these are gonna go into my kitchen toot sweet. After I get done filming this wonderful box opening, I just adore these graphics. So it is a set. You've got one in the front and one in the back. The back is got this wonderful pattern. Happy Halloween and Mickey and pumpkins all over and the bats. And then of course you've got something that is brewing in Minnie's Cauldron and little Mickey who is a vampire. I just adore these. Thank you so, so much. These are going to look so creepy and wonderful in my kitchen, and I adore these. Thank you, thank you. As instructed, we're going to go on to the Child Star, and we've got Miss Daisy, and she's got some wonderful ringlet curls and uh, a big blue bow on her head. She's looking very cute. And this parcel is very long and a little bit heavy. So I'm curious to see what the child star has for us. Of course, we got another lovely card giving us instructions. So let's see what that says. Back in the hallway outside the club, another inexplicable chill runs up your spine. It's quiet here, too quiet. The silence is broken by a child's giggle, which makes you jump. A girl, probably seven or so, with blonde ringlets and a flouncy pink dress exits one of the guest rooms. A doll dangles from her hand, and a serious-looking middle-aged woman, her nanny, if you had to guess, follows her out. With another giggle and her nanny close behind, the girl traipses past you and into the elevator. She turns to you and gives you a little curtsy. The doll's eyes seem fixed on you as the door slides shut and the floor indicator dings. You wonder if it might have been a better idea to stay in the club. Open the package with the child star on it, then find the leading man and read his note. And I love this touch. They have written different numbers in all of these circles, of course, indicating that there are 13 floors in the Tower of Terror Hotel. So that was a wonderful touch. Pretty creepy. Oh my goodness. I am so happy to receive this. It is once again, uh, something that I saw on the website for the Disney store and I did not order it and I was sad that I didn't because my family loves to play games and I thought this one was so wonderfully uh, themed. It is the Jenga Hollywood Tower Hotel version. It's a Disney park theme park edition and look at the gorgeous colors. You've got some gold, some of that burgundy, black and gray. And I just love it. I absolutely love it. Look at those tiles and how they are printed. 
I just adore this. Thank you so, so much. And we're going on to the leading man. And look at Mickey and that mustache. Hmm. I think it's a handsome look, don't you? Okay, our last card. Let's see what this one says. Maybe you should check on your room. That seems like the responsible thing to do. So you hit the button to call the second elevator and go back to the lobby. But when the doors slide open, the bellhop from earlier is standing inside. Ah, just who I was looking for. He smiles, though it somehow looks wrong on his face. Your room is ready. He waits a moment while the other elevator passenger steps out. A slender man dressed in a striking white suit, twirling his thin mustache like an old-timey villain. Don't forget, you were supposed to help me, Dewey, he says, his voice charming and confident. Of course, Mr. London. The bellhop gives you a little bow and hands you your room key. Please enjoy your stay at the Hollywood Tower Hotel. The two of them walk back down the hallway and into another room. Even though you puzzled over your reservation confirmation for a good long while on the way to the Hollywood Tower Hotel, it's only now that you realize you're set in to stay in room number 1313. You're not superstitious, but frankly, you've been uneasy ever since you arrived. Something's off about this place. You unlock the door that matches the key and hesitate. Spotting your suitcase just inside, you grab it and leave the key in the lock. It's not that you're afraid, but your gut is telling you something's wrong and there's no way you're sleeping here. You hurry back down the hallway to the elevators and push the call button again. When it arrives, thankfully empty, you hustle inside and stab the lobby button. Thunder rumbles outside as the floor indicator dings and the lights go out. I don't like this. Open the package with the leading man on it and have a very happy Halloween. And the leading man's package is a lovely shade of green. So let's see what's inside this package. And I have found two items. Okay, so of course this is a lovely door hanger with the Mickey shape for the doorknob. And it says, drop in if you dare, the Hollywood Tower Hotel. So this is marvelous. And it looks very much like the bellhop hats that they wear. So I just adore it. And you can check in, but you can't check out. Absolutely spooky and wonderful. And our final gift. And it is, of course, a lovely keychain. The Hollywood Tower Hotel with the lovely emblem. Room, of course, 1313. This is wonderful. And we've got our final card that I found at the very bottom of the suitcase. So let's read that. Hi friend, we hope you enjoyed your adventure through the Hollywood Tower Hotel. I sure did. I love it, love it, love it. We knew we wanted to do something special to celebrate the spooky time of year. So Abby wrote this little story just for you. There's nothing like a story to get you swept up in the season, so we hope you loved it. The Hollywood Tower will always be here should you ever decide to drop in again. Happy Halloween. Sincerely, Abby and Hope, the Disney sisters. And of course, I knew all along who did this wonderful job on procuring all of these wonderful items. I knew that Abby had written a wonderful story to go with Vicky's box last year, and I just knew who this was. So I wanna thank you girls so, so very much. I think that myself and the viewers have loved this. It's so spooky. It puts you in all the feels. 
for the Halloween season. And I, of course, loved all of my gifts. Thank you so, so much to go to all the trouble that you guys did. You did a fantastic job as you always do. I appreciate everything that you've given me and I appreciate you guys and your friendship. If you haven't checked out the Disney sisters, I'm sure that you have, but if you have not, of course, I'm gonna link them down below. They are just wonderful, delightful, sweet girls and you'll love watching them just as much as I do. So thanks so much again. I really, really appreciate you guys. What, what's happening? Are, don't go, are you, are you still there? Okay, Chuck, we've cut the electric and we've set the detonator. Operation Save Ima is ready to go. It wasn't me, it was Chuck, the scheduling manager. There was a Bigfoot sighting over at the Tasty Freeze and he wants you to go cover it. What? What? Ooh, well, it's good to be back among you all, finally getting out of that office. I want to say a huge thank you to you. If you're watching this, uh, if you've been watching all the other videos, wonderful videos that uh, all of my peers have put together for you, they've just been wonderful, haven't they? So I've always said that this wouldn't be a ball without you guys uh, coming and supporting everyone, uh, making those comments, um, giving the likes and subscribing to new channels that you find. Uh, it means the world. And going on to my peers, I want to give a huge shout out to them and a thank you to them. You know, I, I've said, if you had a crazy friend that said to you in August, hey, I'd like for you to put together a Halloween box, but you don't know who it's going to go to, and I need you to finish it and ship it to me by September the 1st. You, some of you would think that I was crazy, and they probably did, but they were wonderfully supportive and as sweet as can be. And I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you guys because you all did it. I'm amazed. Everybody came through like chance. We had time to spare. You know, I was worried about the post office having some issues. But I tell you, this went as smoothly as it could have possibly gone. And it's all thanks to everybody in this group. You're all wonderful. I love you dearly. I'm giving kisses through this whole thing. Mwah. Love you all. So speaking of peers, I had a wonderful friend of mine, Amanda Bonner, reach out. She has a lovely podcast that is Disney related. It's Disney Travel for All. And she asked me to come on and speak with her about spooky things, uh, the boo ball, first and foremost. And then we talked about the parks and how they looked a little different this year, but still bringing in that spooky fun that we all love. So I wanted to say thanks to Amanda for having me on again. It was a wonderful chat. I really enjoyed it. And if you listen to podcasts and you like Disney content specifically, Amanda's podcast is a wonderful listen. And I will put a link to that specific episode that we talked about the boo ball, uh, some behind the scenes, if you want to get more info. Um, it was just a lot of fun. And I think that you'll enjoy it too, especially this time of year. Can't get enough of that spooky stuff, right? Uh, my wonderful friend, Keith Groshans of Rocket Juiced is a wonderful designer. Um, last year he designed his very first pin for the boo ball. I'm very proud to say, and you would never know that it was his first pin. It was a gorgeous pin. And this year, I, I can't believe that he outdid himself. If you ever need any graphic design work, Keith is your guy. He's gonna be as nice as he is talented to deal with. And of course, I will link his information down below. And I would love for you guys to check in with me before you leave the video here. Let me know what are your plans for the fall, for Halloween. If you don't celebrate Halloween, let me know. What have you guys been doing to have fun in the present circumstances for Halloween? Are the kiddos going to go trick-or-treating? Are you dressing up? If so, what are you guys going to dress up as? Let me know what you guys have been up to. So I think that's going to wrap it up. Thanks once more to everybody. I'm so very appreciative. 
It's so good to see all of you. It's so good to know that you had fun with the boo ball again this year. It means so much to me. It really does. And we will see you in the next video. So until then, you take care. Stay spooky. Bye-bye.